Good morning, everyone. What's going on, Yuri? Here, welcome to Yuri. Here, welcome to Coach's Corner. Uh, I just got back in from a major snow removal operation on my driveway. We just got like I don't even know a foot and a half of snow, a lot of snow. So I'm like, you know what? This is going to be today's workout. Seriously taxing. So let's talk about today about why prospects say no to working with you. So let's say you're a coach or practitioner, you're dealing with people online, you're having a conversation over the phone, and they say, you know, I need to think about it, or it's too expensive, or whatever the thing is, okay? The number, like, there's a lot of different objections, right? So there's, you know, price, there's timing, there's a a number of, like, different stalls. But what I want to do is I want to simplify this whole quote unquote selling process for you uh, and distill down to one thing, okay? There's one reason above everything else to which why people say no, okay? And that one reason, I'll get to in a second. Man, I'll tell you what it is. All right, so let me, let me give you an example. So let's say that I give you a black box and I ask you to put your hand in it. Would you put your hand in it? You can't see what's inside the box, okay? So I'm just asking you, hey, like, do you want to put your hand in? Could be some cool stuff inside. Maybe not. Maybe there's a a tarantula. Maybe there's a scorpion. Who knows, right? Could be anything. So do you put your hand in the box? And the answer to that question is it depends. So there's two things here. If you were to ask a family member to put their hand in the box, they would most likely say, Sure. Why? Why would a family member say, okay, no problem? The reason for that is because they trust you. Okay. Now let's say you go to a random stranger who's never seen you on the street and you ask them to put their hand in the black box. What are they going to say? They're going to be like, oh, hold on. Like what's, what's, what's going on here? I don't know if I feel comfortable doing this. Actually, this is a a little bit of a side note. A couple years ago, we were actually doing a a fun, uh, fun filming day, and we did some stuff at Starbucks, and we had all these extra pastries and donuts because we were using this as an example of like whatever. And we had all this stuff, and I'm like, I'm not gonna eat all this. We had like frappuccinos, and what we started doing <laughs> is we started giving them away for free on the sidewalk. People would just walk by and were like, Hey, like, do you want a frappuccino and a pastry? I mean, like, obviously, like, not condoning really the, like the best food choices here. But you would be amazed at how many people are like, no, sorry. They were scared. They were scared of the proposition. They thought like, and this is way before COVID, okay? Just imagine now, like people are ridiculous at the best of times. Um, Now people just walk off the sidewalk into oncoming traffic to avoid people on the sidewalk. It's ridiculous. Anyways, so we're giving like stuff they can see and they're like, well, what's this is suspicious. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, let's come back to the black box. If you take the black box, you ask someone to put their hand in, they're going to say probably no. So two things are happening here. Number one, they're going to say no to you because they don't trust you. Okay? Okay? So trust is important, but that's not the number one reason why people say no to you. So let's look at scenario number two. Scenario number two is I come to the fishbowl and there's water inside and you can see exactly what's in the fishbowl. And now I ask, all right, can you put your hand in the bowl? because you can see there's a key in there and that key is going to unlock whatever it is that you you want, right? Now, in that case, are you gonna put your hand in the bowl? More likely, yes, because you can see exactly what's in there. So here's the thing, guys. The reason people say no to you is because they are entering the black box. What that means is they lack certainty That's the key word, certainty, that your solution is going to work for them. Now, trust comes into play there, right? If someone doesn't really know you, they're not going to trust you. And if they don't trust you, they're most likely not going to do business with you. That's why it is technically easier to convert people who've been following you for for, months or years than it is for people who just found out about you know, and add this on Facebook. Now, it doesn't mean you can't convert people from Facebook because we've been doing it for six years every single week day in and day out, but you have to build your business with the understanding that you have to build trust, you have to build certainty, you have to build goodwill with people before they're gonna do anything with you. So the number one reason why people say no to you is because 
they don't have certainty that your solution is going to work for them. That's it. So when they say, I need to think about it, what do they have to think about? They have to think about in their minds. Here's what's happening in people's minds, all of us. When we are forced to make a decision, we have two movies playing in our mind. Movie number one is, oh shit, what if this doesn't work out? Okay. Movie number two is, what if this does work out? And for a lot of people who say they want things but don't do anything about them, the reason for that is because movie number one, the perceived pain of, oh crap, what if this doesn't work out, is much greater and more prominent than what if this does work out? They focus on what it's going to cost them as opposed to what it's going to make them in the case of a business context, okay? Here's another example. So yesterday we went to look at a new home. And we thought this was the house. Like, we're like, this is, this is it, right? And we went to see the house that for like the third time. And we got there and I saw these massive, like four foot icicles hanging from the roof. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't think that's normal. I don't, <laughs> and then I looked around the neighborhood as we drove and I was like, none of these other houses have four foot, like blades of ice like swords of ice that could penetrate a human body hanging from the from the roofs. I don't think that's a good thing. And I talked to a realtor and she's like, oh yeah, that's, that's not a good thing. And then there was just all sorts of issues inside the house. So we're like, okay, well, we could, we could put an offer in and completely lowball them because we'd have to almost redo the, the new house that was built with so many little uh, stupid shortcuts, right? So I'm like, so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, what's the, what's, what's the pro, what's the con here? What is the worst case scenario if we get this house is that the whole thing just is a, is a money pit, right? And the upside was the location is just phenomenal. Like right on Lake Ontario, park right beside the house. Like, oh my God, like amazing location. So then we're like, all right, well, like, are we willing to make the compromise? And the answer, after seeing it for the third time and seeing all sorts of issues that we had brought up with them initially that were not fixed, we said, it's not worth it, okay? Because the what if this doesn't work out story was much more prominent compared to the benefit, especially when there were other options that we could look at, okay? So all of this to say that with what you do, it is really important to understand that certainty sells. Right. If the homeowners or the uh, the people selling that house, if they had told us a month ago when we were first looking at it, oh yeah, for sure, we will fix all of this stuff, guaranteed. That would have been nice because they kind of said they did, they would, and nothing was done. That's not really <laughs> that's not really inspiring a lot of confidence. So, in selling, let's go back to your conversations with prospects on the phone. Even if you have no social proof, okay? So a client of ours was asking us the other day, is like, what happens if you have no social proof? Because certainty will be built with the more social proof that there is. Like naturally that's gonna happen, right? If you have a thousand case studies of positive results, that's gonna build certainty in your prospect's minds. But we all start at zero, right? We all start at zero. We have no social proof and then we do. So if that's the case, you always have to remember how does that first person make the sale? How does that person make sale number one? And it always comes down to you and your conviction. You must, you must be more convicted than the person you're speaking to. You must have more certainty about your solution than they do about their story, okay? Because a sale is always made. Either they buy your solution or you buy their story. And if you buy their story, they lose and you lose. If they buy your solution in terms of, hey, let's do this, let's work together, then you have one, but most importantly, they have one because they came to you with a problem that you can solve and you've mutually agreed that this is the best fit. And now there might be fear, self-doubt or whatever else is getting in the way. It's your job to have 1000% certainty in your solution for the right fit clients. I believe with every single fiber in my being, that our coaching programs are the best on the planet. Is it delusional? 100%. Are there other ones that are great? For sure. I think mine are the best. And you should think yours are the best too because if you don't believe your stuff is the best, guess who else isn't gonna think that? Your prospects, okay? And it's not about, it's not about being narcissistic and it's not about being like whatever, 
Like you have to, you have to be sold on you and your thing first before anyone else will. So certainty sells guys and a lack of certainty is the reason, the number one reason why people say no to you. So when they tell you it's too expensive or they have to think about it or whatever, all of that means is they are not certain about your solution for them. Cool. Listen, if you guys want to help enrolling clients and be much more effective in conversations with potential clients without feeling salesy and pushy, this is what I do every single day with my clients. Okay. Because a big piece of what you do in business, especially virtually, is going to be selling over the phone. And you have to be able to lead these conversations in such a way that gets more people to say yes. Because if they say no to you, they continue to suffer. And so do you. Because you you don't help them. You don't make the money. And it kills your confidence. So if you'd like our help, and if you'd like to have a conversation, at least over DM, about what this could look like for you and to see if you're a good fit for our help, then just send me a DM, private message, whatever you want to call it. And let's have a conversation to see if we might be able to help you, okay? You must be a health expert. You must be online or be willing to go online. And you must have the courage to step into the unknown. Because if you want to go where you haven't been before and you're here and you want to go here, you're going to have to learn new skills. You're going to have to take a little bit of a different journey than what you're currently taking. And as long as you're committed to doing the work and have the courage, we can help you create some amazing things, okay? So send me a DM if you'd like some help. And uh, I got to go because I actually have a client call in a couple minutes. All right, guys. Ciao. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. And listen, if you're here, you're here for a reason. You're a health expert. You know you've got a bigger vision, you've got a bigger role to play in this world. And right now, things are maybe not where you want them to be. If you want more clients, if you want to make more impacts, that's amazing. And I'd love to help you. So I think the next step for you to take is to watch our Perfect Client Pipeline training. It's going to show you exactly how to get clients coming into your virtual practice, your coaching business online, in a consistent and predictable fashion without having to spend all day on social media, without being glued to your phone, without all the grind. You see, if you can't step away from your business and still have it move forward in your absence, then you don't have a business. And I don't want that to be your case because burnout is a very real problem for health professionals. So I wanna help you. So the next step is click the link in the description below Watch the Perfect Client Pipeline training today. I promise you it'll be a very good use of your time. If you've enjoyed the previous video that you just watched, you will love this masterclass. Again, it's totally free to attend. Watch it now. And at the end, if you'd like our help to take the next step, then by all means, we can show you what that might look like if that makes sense for you. So once again, click the link in the description below. I look forward to seeing you in the masterclass and I'll see you there.